From the start of the game's release, in version 1 all the way back in late 2018 to now reaching 4 years later, our understanding of Smash Ultimate's meta, its characters, what's good or bad, and so on has changed drastically, more so than any other previous title. Some members of the cast who were almost unanimously agreed upon as high or top tier have lost a lot of notoriety, while others who were discarded as mid or low tier have since proved us wrong, with the help of version updates or player experimentation. One such character from the first category is Ike, the main protagonist of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and a deuteragonist of Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, my two favorite titles in the franchise. At the beginning of Smash Ultimate's competitive scene, the buffs to Ike either directly such as improving his moveset or indirectly such as universal reduction to landing lag have made players gravitate towards him, particularly Leo who garnered a lot of success with him in 2019. Following the return of offline competition, however, Ike's results have for all intents and purposes vanished, and while we still have a few players representing him like Yez, Raven King, and just recently Mega who placed top 16 at Apex 2022, he's nowhere near as present anymore, despite being the sword fighter who is still considered by many to be a respectable high tier. So for today, let's find out what happened to Ike, why no one plays him anymore. As the third Fire Emblem character to be introduced in the Smash Bros franchise, as well as the third official sword fighter not counting Link, Ike served to contrast Mart's fast frame data by opting for a slower but more powerful approach. He was initially thought of as a replacement seeing as Roy was not included in Brawl, but their playstyles were nothing alike. Without going too far in detail, Ike's performance in competitive Brawl was average to above average more or less, but his lackluster frame data made him feel a lot less effective than Marth who wasn't that much weaker but far better in speed and mobility. Come Smash 4, Ike was given a controversial series of buffs and nerfs, reducing his power in exchange for better physics and more generous frame data. Popular opinion came to the conclusion that while the increased mobility and frame data was certainly helpful, it failed to address his flaws and predictable option selection, resulting in a net negative for the character, especially given his loss of power, which ironically would have been amazing to have in Smash 4's Rage Utilized meta. Game updates would alleviate this to some degree, but once again, Ike was seen as considerably worse than Marth in performance, and the reasons to use him were made even fewer after Corrin and Cloud were brought into play. Although he stood firm even after the one he was meant to replace, Roy was reinstated. Come Smash Ultimate, the playing field was leveled, causing many high and top tiers to be nerfed while simultaneously buffing low and bottom tiers to be more effective. Alongside Roy, who was also suffering from bad performance in two games, Ike was significantly buffed across the board. They still wanted to preserve the idea of a slow but powerful sword fighter, yet at the same time making his strengths more discernible and distinguishable from his peers. And initially, they succeeded, most notably through his neutral air. Prior to version 8, Ike's snare was in hot contention for one of the best in the game, only challenged by the likes of Palutena or Game & Watch. At a startup of frame 10, it's not particularly effective at a shield but has an extremely long-lasting hitbox covering all around him except for directly above. Regardless of whether you hit the strong or weak hitbox, he would then be able to follow up into just about all of his aerials. Forward air, back air, up air, or just another nair. His up air was also completely reworked, no longer being a circular swing but just an overhead slash, thus turning it into another generic up air like you see on every Fire Emblem character. As a Night main in Brawl, I was kind of against it at first, but obviously it's a lot more practical, possessing incredible vertical and even horizontal range while having immense kill power. A staple confirmed for him early on was landing Nair into up air, killing most people at around 80 to 90 percent. It wasn't flashy, but this gave Ike some of the most straightforward yet potent mid-range pressure and punish game among the entire cast. Meanwhile, his ground game would easily convert into his aerials like down tilt or outright kills such as up tilt, forward tilt, and dash attack. This would further extend into his throws, allowing down throw and up throw to combo into a forward air. Overall, Ike's early popularity was a result of three things. The first was how easy he was to pick up. He was always a straightforward character, just not very effective in relation to others until now. With his neutraler, he could effectively spam it in neutral and his generous hit stun allowed him to combo into any one of his other aerials, depending on where they were hit. He had no trouble closing his stocks through his endless repertoire of 1-2 combos. The second was the Smash community's initial perception of what was good. At the start of Ultimate, many players were immediately drawn to characters with strong nares out of shield. So many people hyped up Palutena as the best character in the game purely from how broken her nair was, and I mean it was good. It wouldn't be too hyperbolic to say that 90% of Ike's neutral game consisted of spamming nair. Granted, it wasn't the safest on shield at minus 5, there were plenty of aerials that were minus 3 or even minus 2. But when you pair that with how big the hitbox is, not many characters could punish nair out of shield due to range, or lack thereof. The third is an extension of the first and second, the underdeveloped meta. We are now entering year 5 of Smash Ultimate and the game isn't even a fraction of the way from being solved. The consensus at the time was that Krom and Inkling were like the top two best characters in the game and Game & Watch was bad. Everyone mostly operated on a first impression basis. That and, you know, the only half-decent DLC fighter we had for the better part of 2019 was Joker. 
Piranha Plant Hero, and Banjo were written off as four fun characters. Interestingly, Ike received a mini rework in version 8.0, forcing those who maintained him to reconfigure their win conditions especially at higher percents. To lessen his over-reliance on Nair and Telpair to close out a lot of his stocks, he's neutral air regained a lot of knockback skilling, preventing you from true comboing into it at mid percent since it would launch them too high to combo into up air past the 100% mark. In exchange, however, Ether was given tremendous knockback skilling, killing most below 100% if used near the ledge. It's a very slow out of shield option at a frame 15 startup, but if it lands, Ike basically has a forward smash out of shield. His forward air also lost 8 frames of end lag, so you could reliably use it as an edge guarding tool off stage, on top of doing more damage. Finally, Down Tilt was given higher combo potential, and Dash Attack gained way more KO pressure. The buffs and nerfs were divisive at first, on account of Ike means losing their patented kill confirm. But in retrospect, it gave Ike players a bit more room for nuanced gameplay, thus allowing for more kill options and less predictable of a neutral game. He was then buffed a little more in 13.0.1, mostly quality of life stuff to increase his already high kill power. The strange thing is that Ike's representation has been in serious decline even though he was only ever buffed, not really nerfed. More of a head scratcher is that next to Cloud, Ike is a fantastic response to characters that famously give players trouble. Ness, Game & Watch, Sonic to some extent, Olimar, Pac-Man, even Steve. If not your main choice, he should at least be a common secondary, so what happened between then and now? The first reason is one that he struggled with ever since Sprawl. Ike is straightforward to a fault. Other than Marth and Lucina, I would say he's the sortiest sortie that ever sortied, as in he's the epitome of a sword fighter. Long range, decent power, linear game plan. You've likely heard many people express Cloud and Lucina as Fundy's characters, where the measure of their success is determined by how good the player's knowledge of the game is. Ike is also Fundy's character. One might try to argue that his Nair is so brainless it plays a game for you, but that's not necessarily true. He does have very good range and power, but his mobility is quite horrendous, and his frame data could be better. Now, given the sorties are inherently more reliant on players being good at the game, whichever offers more return on investment is obviously going to be the one players will go after. Sadly for Ike, his traits are not unique only to him, leading many to believe that, with all due respect, he's kind of boring. Credit where credit is due, many pros consider him a high tier character and can definitely net results in the right hands, but he's comparatively uninteresting. The other sword fighters try to market themselves through some kind of gimmick or personal trait. Shulk has the same premise of emphasizing mid-range combat, but his various Monado arts allow him to instantly shift his momentum and pressure around to the situation. Roy and Krom trade a bit of range in exchange for far better speed and frame data, being able to rush down even close quarters combatants like Fox and Mario all without sacrificing too much kill power. Cloud's range is almost on par with Ike's, yet he has better speed, frame data, access to a projectile, more consistent out of shield options, and of course, limit, essentially compromising on raw strength and maybe combo potential for better utility and physics. There's also Aegis, specifically Pyra, who has the same exact power, if not more than Ike, with the ability to swap to one of the best characters in the game. This might upset Ike players, but in the eyes of those who are looking at all the sword fighters wondering who to pick up, Ike just doesn't stand out. He's strong, yeah, but we have Roy who's faster, Sephiroth who has more range, and Pyra who has an alter ego that everyone wishes never existed. Even among the not so hard hitters, such as Cloud, Lucina, and Shulk, they each have more elements of utility that allow for more options. To repeat, Ike is a good character, a great one at that, but his whole niche of being the powerful swordy is not really a novelty anymore. Almost everyone has some way to kill you at 80% or less, making his other problems stand out a lot more. Ike is slow. Really slow. Which is weird. Not to get too nitpicky on how loyal a Smash character is to its source material, but Ike is actually pretty dang fast in his home titles, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. If anything, he should be as fast as Roy and Marth. Then again, Robin and Korn's terrible mobility doesn't really speak true to their home titles either. But going back to Ultimate, speed and frame data are valued way more than power because of one simple aspect. Lack of turns. In a game like Pokemon, speed and power are balanced around each Pokemon taking one turn. Say you have an Aggron and you're fighting a Weavile. Obviously the Weavile will go first, it's an incredibly fast Pokemon. But, Aggron is always promised an opportunity to strike back since Pokemon is a turn-based game. So if he survives, whatever Weavile throws out, he can take his turn. Smash is not like that. A fast character can take several turns before a slow character gets to, and even then, the former can use their superior mobility to either snuff out the latter's option or run away to avoid the hit. That's been the most prominent issue for super heavies dating all the way back to the concept's inception. Ike's poor ground and air mobility as well as lackluster frame data somewhat defeats the purpose of his overwhelming power and range. Despite having frame data you would only see on the likes of Bowser or K. Rule, he's nowhere near as heavy as them. He's actually lighter than Samus and Terry, two fighters with pretty damn good frame data all things considered. 
Naturally, this means he's not really the type of swordy who wants to approach and prefers to go for a more spacing whiff punish oriented win condition, which he's exceptionally proficient at. Against an opponent who isn't aware of his threat range and pressure, I cracks the damage arguably the best out of any sword fighter, and again, he has a ton of moves that whoop your ass below 100%. But against an opponent who is aware of his pressure and or is equipped with the means to deal with it, the onus is then placed on Ike to approach or be more aggressive, which he can't really do as effectively as Cloud, Roy, Mithra, or Speedform Shulk, nor does he have a way to force approaches the way Robin does. Also, before anyone says you can approach with Quick Draw, you're out of your mind if you think you can use that in neutral. In other words, your only asset is your range and power, except every sword he has range and power. Yes, Ike has more range and power, but it's not that much more to where his peers can't kill. And, you know, we now have Min Min and Sephiroth with even more range. See, at the start of the video, I brought up that one reason Ike was popular early on was the result of prevailing wisdom at the time valuing neutral air a lot more than they should have. Nowadays, one aspect of the game among others, of course, that is highly sought after in high and top levels of play is the ability to alleviate pressure. That is to say, how good you are at getting your opponent off of you. For example, Cloud and Ike are relatively similar when it comes to handling most matchups. Not the same, but a lot of similarities. The reason Cloud is more popular is not only that he's faster and has a projectile and all that, but he is better out of shield options. Climaster doesn't have anywhere near the same kill power as Ether, but it's a far better get off me tool, and Sorties really need that. Lucina and Marth have a frame 1 combo breaker in the form of Aerial Dolphin Slash, Shulk's Air Slash, and Shield Dart, stuff like that. Why? They're at their best when fighting mid-range, unless your name is Roy, Krom, or Mithra. Even those three, they would rather play at mid-range because it means they can hit you while you can't hit them. This extends to characters you wouldn't expect. Game & Watch isn't classified as a sortie, but he enjoys playing mid-range and is arguably the best get-off-me tool in the form of fire. This is one area where playing Ike feels really uncomfortable. He has no way of getting opponents away from him once they do get up close and personal. That gets even more frustrating when you remember that Ike is a very exploitable recovery, requiring him to have immaculate stage control and prevent being thrown off stage as often as possible. Once again, an out of shield option or a get off me tool would be really nice to have for someone who has to play like this. The fastest option he has out of shield is frame 13 or grab at frame 7, not fast enough to punish most landing aerials. In essence, Ike sort of relies on his opponents being bad or careless to perform at his best, making his performance at low and mid-level play really good, passable at high tier, and underwhelming at top tier. To repeat, many players believe Ike is a mid-high tier or high tier character, very respectable placement and without a doubt his best standing of the three Smash games he's been in so far. Unfortunately though, he was a huge victim of circumstance. In the Brawl days, his only other sortie competition was Marth and I guess Meta Knight. Now we have Roy, Krom, Marth, Lucina, Cloud, Robin, Korn, Shul, Kiro, Byleth, Min Min, yes I'm including Min Min, Sephiroth, Pyra, Mithra, Sora. The competition is heavily saturated in the sortie category. Everything he has, someone else can do better or has something else in their moveset that makes them more consistent or more comfortable to play than him. This might be a hot take, but I feel like they made a mistake trying to illustrate him as a slow but powerful sortie. Yes, he's buff, especially in Radiant Dawn, my god. But sorties shouldn't be slow. If they are slow, they should have the necessary means to protect themselves. What intrigues me, however, is the way he plays. Ike's a very neutral focus with punish 1-2 combo kind of guy. He's also very good at platform extension mid-range focus. He could do all that while being faster in exchange for less power. None of the other sorties have a nair that works the way his does, so they could act on that. Perhaps it would be too unfair for him to be any faster or mobile even if it meant losing strength since a sortie with easy 1-2 conversions might become broken, but that's sort of the premise of Ike to begin with. He doesn't have any fancy DLC mechanic or projectiles or glass cannon properties, he's just a regular guy. He was the first main character in Fire Emblem to not be part of royalty or a position of power, he was just an ordinary dude. Thematically, it makes sense for him to have a very ordinary kit, but that's what I think they should have embraced. I kept saying this throughout the video, but Ike's moveset is perfectly fine if only they weren't trying to sell this Hulk and Balkan feel to it, especially when there's other characters with just as much power as him but way better speed or utility. Maybe I'm not alone in this way of thinking, so if you agree or disagree, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. If they were gonna make Roy top tier after he was bad for two games, Ike deserves the same treatment in my opinion. Anyways, this can be it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsVerm, join my Discord server, I'm trying to grow my Smash community some more, and check out my other Why No One Plays episodes if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.